This is the first of the Giroux Intermediate Projects. It's called When Two Friends Meet. Let's just have a look at it in action. Here is the finished product. Okay, so I'm going to stop the program now and let's review. We start off with two Jeru's in the corner. The one on the left is called Daffy and the one on the right is called Bugs Bunny. And then they start off facing each other and then they start planting flowers as they go. When they run into each other they both turn and they plant flowers downward. Then when they reach the water they turn outward and then continue to plant flowers until they reach their corners here on the bottom left and the bottom right and then they stop moving. Now, initially, you might be tempted to hard code everything in the main program by creating the two Jeru's and just putting in here uh, an extremely large number of hop and plant statements. However, we're going to do this a slightly different way by using Jeru methods. We're going to create a generic move method that Bugs and Daffy are going to share and this move method is going to contain enough intelligence to allow them to navigate this island in the pattern shown. For the rest of this video we're going to give some hints as to how to construct this move method. But before we do that let's have a brief review of the structure of the main method. We see that the main method is quite simple. We create the two Jeru's one at each corner. They each start their lives with uh, 90 flowers as is indicated in the instruction sheet. And then we have an infinite loop here, uh, while true, and we just have Daffy, who is the Drew on the left, make a move, and then Bugs, who is the Drew on the right, uh, make a move. And these two alternate making moves. And now let's just go over to the Drew uh, methods tab. And right now we have defined this move method quite simply to indicate a hop. And I think I'll put a plant in there also so we can see the flowers starting to bloom on the board. And let's just run this just like this and see what happens. I'll speed this up a little. And here we go. All right, so here are the Jeru's. And the first thing we notice is that the first square does not have a flower in it. So we already have a bug in our code. But let's see what happens when the Jeru's run into each other. OK, here we can see from the error message that Daffy collided with bugs. So the two Jeru's collided with each other because we did not put any code in here to have them turn when they met each other. Uh, the other thing is you notice that this first square here does not have a flower in it. And looking at this sequence that we've written here, can you tell the first uh, issue that we have with our code? Uh, hopefully you realize that this plant method should be called before the hop method. And that will of course allow a plant, uh, a flower to be planted in the very first spot. Now, as for the other problem with the two Jeru's colliding, that's going to take a little bit more work. Uh, let's uh, see when it is that we do not want the Jeru's to hop and plant anymore. I think if you think about it a little bit, you'll realize that it's as soon as the two Jeru's uh, come face to face with one another. So we're going to use an if statement. This will be the first of several if statements that we deploy in this uh, method move. So here's how I'm going to start the move method now to make sure that when the two Jeru's run into each other that they do not keep moving. I'll say if is clear ahead and then I'll say that will be the only time that I do this plant and hop. Let's see how this looks as we rerun the method. Uh, let's run the program from the beginning again. And I've forgotten one parenthesis here. That's a very common mistake on my part. Let's try that again. OK, here we see the Jeru's are planting their flowers. And our goal, if we've done the move method correctly, is when they uh, meet each other, they will, um, instead of colliding, simply come to a stop. OK, and we see that the program has uh, been successful, at least the part that we've written and the Drews now no longer collide with one another. I'm going to stop the program here and 
have another look at this Giroux move method. Now you can see that it, it, if the, the path is clear ahead, they continue to plant and hop. And then the question arises, what should they do if, uh, if the path is not clear ahead? Um, I think one thing we can do here is we can use an else statement. But for reasons that will become uh, clear later, uh, it's better if we just create a completely separate if. I'm going to say if there is is Jeru uh, ahead, then what do we want to do? What do we want to do if there's another Jeru facing us? Well, I think we want to turn. That much is clear. But here is where it starts to get a little tricky. We need to know which direction to turn. And the reason why this is harder than it looks is that we want the blue Jeru, which is the Daffy Jeru, to turn right. And we want the orange Jeru, which is the Bugs Jeru, to turn left. How can we distinguish in here which direction to turn, even though we're going to be calling the same move method on the two different Jerus? So in other words, at this level in the main method, uh, there is no distinguishing being made between uh, what one move looks like versus another. We're calling the exact same method here. But inside the method, we want to take a different action based on whether it's the blue Jeru or the orange Jeru. Now, there are a couple of different ways to do this. I'm going to show you two ways. One way we can do it is we can simply take action, a different action based on the direction that we're facing. So you notice that the blue Jeru, for example, is facing in the eastward direction. That's to the right. So I can add another if statement in here. I can say if is facing east, if it's facing east, then we want the Jeru uh, to turn right. Now, otherwise, else we want the Jeru to turn left. OK, let's try out this one now. So now we should make some additional progress in addition to planting the flowers in the first row. When they come against each other, they should both be able to turn in the proper direction. I'm going to do a save, a rewind, and let's play the program again. OK, here they are. They're starting off, and they're planting their flowers. And let's see what happens when they meet now. And you can see that they were able to turn when they uh, met with each other. And now we're going to keep going forward. I'm going to stop the program here. And I'm going to show you one other way we can uh, set up the program so that when the Jerus meet, uh, they can uh, ch switch to a different uh, direction. Uh, last time, we used what direction they were facing as the decision point. This time, I'm going to use the water to determine uh, which way to turn. So if we have the blue Jeru over here facing to the right, the water is to the left. Whereas if the orange Jeru is facing to the left, its water is on the right. So I'm going to say, if is water. And I'm going to say if water is to the left, I want the Jeru to turn right, else I want to turn left. So let's try this version of the program and see if it works equally well. I'll do a save and a rewind, and here we go. And here comes the magic moment when they meet up. And once again, they are able to turn uh, based on the logic that we have provided. So to review, uh, the first time we wrote the program, we made them turn based on what direction they were facing. This other time, we made them turn based on where the water was. And the reason why I've shown you two different ways is you're going to need a whole bag of tricks like this to get the program to finish its completed pattern. Now, the other thing that makes this program hard is knowing how to make the Jerus stop when they reach the two bottom corners. Uh, one, one good way to do that is to set up the move method with various if statements. And when the Jerus reach their corners, have each of these if statements come out to be false. 
And if that's the case, no other code is going to execute. And even though this while true code will continue to run forever, both of these move methods will essentially uh, do nothing at that point. That's one possible way of getting the code to sort of uh, terminate after the Jurus reach their final positions. But you can come up with any way you want uh, to have the program terminate. Mm -hmm.